Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey. Here let's learn how to pick up and drop objects. We want to physically pick them up, so we don't want to just click and grab the object and see it vanish from the world and appear in a virtual environment. Instead we want the object to always stay in the world. This one is great for making games where you want the player to feel more connected to the world. Basically the more things you keep close to reality and the more away from UI elements. The more you do that, the more immersive the game becomes. Or simply this is also great if you just want to let the player grab an item or object and move it to a different place. I'm going to cover this tutorial in first person, but it works exactly the same in third person and I'll include both demos in the project files. Also it's going to be using physics so it feels really nice. If you prefer a more guided path with step-by-step -step lectures then check out my complete courses, learn how to make a Builder Defender game using C Sharp, or learn how to make games internally using visual scripting. Perhaps if you're past the beginner stage and want to make the jump to advanced then check out my turn-based strategy course to learn how to manage a more complex project and write some good clean code or learn all about Unity with the Ultimate Unity Overview course, which contains over 50 lectures, each covering a different tool or feature of the engine. I'm always available in the Q&A section, answering your questions every single day. So check them all out with the link in the description. All right, so as a start here, I have my character walking around in first person. For controlling it, I'm using the official star assets made by Unity. There's one in first person and one in third person. I cover them both in another video. They are really awesome and completely free. So I got that one, I just went through it, refactored the code to match my coding style. So with this I have my player character, I can walk around, I can sprint, and I can do anything. For the visuals, these are from the Polygon Shops pack. It's a really awesome pack with tons of props, tons of objects, so it's definitely perfect for this video. There's a link in the description if you want to get it. So over here I've got my character, and my character has physics, and I also add physics to these objects, so I can just push them around. And up here on the counter I've got the muffins that I want to interact with, and again they also got physics so I can push them around and throw all of it to the ground. Then I also have over here a nice bucket and a real nice shopping cart, so the goal is to pick up the muffins and put them on the cart. So let's do that, and the first thing we need is to identify what we're looking at. So if I aim towards that muffin, how do I identify what is right behind the player cursor? For that, as you can imagine, we can use a raycast. So let's make a script to handle that logic, so let's make a new C Sharp script. Call it the player pickup drop. Let's find the player game object, which is here my first person controller with all of the various components. So let's add the script. Okay, so here let's begin by first just listening to input. So let's make a private void update. And on update, let's listen to a button press. So input, get key down. And like in so many PC games, let's use the E key to interact. Okay, so when we have this, we're going to fire a raycast. So physics.raycast. This takes an origin and a direction. Now here we have the game in first person, so we want to fire the raycast from the camera position and pointing straight ahead. However, here we need to make sure we don't use transform.position. The reason for that is because of how the player is set up. So here the player has the origin on the bottom, but we really want from the camera. So we're going to need a reference to the actual camera game object. This is what we're going to use as the starting position and the camera forward as the direction. So up here, let's add a serialized field. Let's make it transform for the player camera transform. Then let's just comment this out just so the code compiles so we can drag the reference. Here in the editor there's the script, let's drag the main camera reference, okay. And now here on the raycast, let's use the raycast starting from the player camera transform dot position and pointing towards the player camera transform dot forward. So this is the forward vector. Then let's use this version of the function. So first we need a raycast hit to get the data. So our raycast hit. Then we have the max distance. We want this so we don't grab the objects from too far away. So over here, let's just define a float for the pickup distance. And let's put it at something like two units. So over here, we use this. And finally, we just have the layer mask. Let's call it pickup layer mask. And let's define it up here so we can define another serialized field. Make it of type layer mask. Okay, so with this, now in the editor, over here we basically have two options. We can either add all of these objects and put them in its own layer. So put all the objects that we want to grab on, for example, the objects layer. Or we can go with the opposite approach, which is pretty much just ignoring the player and selecting anything else. Let's go with that one so we don't have to modify all of the objects. So over here on the first person controller for the pickup layer mask, as you can see the player is already on the layer player. So I'm going to select everything and then just remove the player. Okay, great. So with this, this raycast is going to hit everything right in front of the player's camera, as long as it's within the pickup distance and it's not on the player layer. So if we have this collision, so let's do an if. If we have, let's just do a debug.log just to see what we had. So we'll go into the raycast hit and let's grab the transform. Okay, let's see. 
Okay, so here we are, I'm looking around, let's look at this muffin, press the E key, and yep, there you go, it does identify the muffin. Okay, great. However, now if I also aim at the floor and I press the E key, yep, there you go, it also identifies the floor. So everything is working correctly, now we just need to actually identify the object behind it. For that, let's make a script to identify the object and run the grab logic. Let's create a new C Sharp script, call this the object grabable. Let's attach it to the muffin. Now this muffin is a prefab, so I'm going to go inside the prefab so it applies to all of them. So just drag the script, that's it. Right now there's no need to change anything on this script, just make sure it's attached. Then here on the script we have our rake asset. So we can just do an if. Let's go into the rake asset transform and do a try get component. Let's try to get that component that we just created. So an out object grabable for the object grabable. So this will test if that object that we collide with, if that does have that script. And if so, again, let's just do a quick log, just to make sure the logic all works. Just like this, let's see. So I'm here, and if I look at the floor and press the E key, nope, nothing happens. I point towards these objects, nothing, but I point towards this muffin, and if there you go, it does identify it. And since I applied to the prefab, all of these other ones also work as well. All right, awesome. So we have this working, now we know that the object under the mouse is grabbable. Now let's handle the grab and hold logic. So first let's think of how we're actually going to want to handle that. We want to grab the item and pretty much hold it in front of the player. So for that we need to know where we want that object to be held. One approach would be to just use math to calculate a point right in front of the camera. So we could just use the camera position and the forward vector and calculate a point right in front. But perhaps a more adaptable method would be to define a transform to act as that point. That way it makes it super easy to edit. So over here, let's create an object. However, here we also have another design question, which is, do we want the objects to move as the camera moves or only as the player moves? Both of them are valid options. Really depends on what you want your game to be like. In this case, I want it to move as the camera moves. So for that, I'm going to add the object as a child of the main camera. So over here, let's create a new empty game object. Call it the object grab point. Then for the position, let's position it in front of the camera. So the camera's pointing there, let's push it a bit on the Z axis. So maybe about this, maybe about one on the Z axis. We could also F set it a bit to the side if we wanted, but let's keep it straight in front. So that's it, just a transform component. We don't want any visual at all. So with this point, now let's go into the object grabable script. And over here, let's make a function to grab it. So we're going to make it public so we can call it from the player. Let's make it a void and call it grab. And as a parameter, let's receive the transform for the point. So a transform for the object grab point transform. And now on the player script, so let's go over here to the player script. Let's add another serialized field. Let's make it private transform. For this one, let's call it the same thing. So the object grab point transform. And here in the editor, let's drag that reference. So we want that transform, okay. Now with this over here, we have the object grabable. So let's go in there, call the grab function and let's pass in the object grab point transform. Okay, so we're passing in the exact point. And on this function, we really just want the logic to move the objects towards this point. Since I wanted the object to have physics, I also added a rigid body component. So let's use that to move the object. First of all, we need the reference, so let's grab it. So on awake, we just grab the rigid body reference. Then let's store the object grab point. So up here, make a private for this. And then when we have the function, let's update that point. And then finally for moving it, since we're going to be moving the object rigid body, let's do it on a private void fixed update. We're going to first test if this object is not null. So the object grab point transform, if it is not null, that means that we have some objects, so we should be grabbing. If so, let's go into the object rigid body and call the move function, the move position. Over here, this takes the position where we want to go to, so let's go into the object where it point transform dot position. Okay, so that's it, just like this, it should already be working, so let's see. So here we are, let's look at the muffin, press the E key, and if there you go, it does grab it. Okay, great, so it did work, however, as you can see, it's quite a bit odd. The issue is that the gravity is constantly pulling it down, so we can fix that by pretty much disabling gravity as soon as we pick up the object. So when we have the grab, let's go into the object rigid body, and call use gravity and set it to false. Okay, now I can look, I grab any of there you go, it does pick it up. Okay, good. However, it's still a bit too janky. Look at that, that is very, very jittery, basically moves constantly all the time. We can make it much more smooth by smoothly setting the target position instead of setting it instantly. 
And for that we can use the super useful lerp method that I covered in another video. Really easy way to add any kind of smoothing to any object or variable. So over here we're going to use a vector3.lerp. And we're going to lerp between the current transform.position and the target position, which is going to be this one. So we want to lerp towards that position. Then to make it smooth, let's use time dot on time multiplied by a certain lerp speed. So up here, let's define this. Let's say maybe 10f. So this is how we're calculating the vector three for the new position. And we just move towards this new position. So instead of moving instantly towards the target position, it will smoothly interpolate between the current one and the target. So now I can once again go up here, pick up the muffin, and there you go, nice and smooth. All right, great. Now with this, if your object is still too jittery instead of nice and smooth, make sure that on the object rigid body over here under interpolate, you set it to yes, interpolate. So now if I look around, you can see, yep, the object falls along. Now this is the design difference that I was talking about. So like this, the object is glued to the camera. So as I rotate around, the object moves. However, the other way, like I mentioned, is simply make the point a child of the player. So over here for the object red point, instead of being a child of the camera, let's make it just a child of the player controller. With this, you can see that if I move the camera around, the object does not move. It only moves if I actually move the player controller. Now, obviously, with this method, you would also need the character controller to rotate to face where the player was looking at. But with that change, here you have both methods. Which one you want depends on what kind of game you're making. For me, I quite like the main camera method, so I'm going to keep this. Now, there's actually still one slight issue left. If I'm holding the object and I move forward, which means that the player collides with it, if I do that, look at that, the object suddenly became really jittery. So this is the last issue. But before we actually handle that, let's first handle the drop. So over here on the object, let's make another function. So public void drop. And here it's actually pretty simple. We're just going to do the exact opposite. So let's clear the field. So set that one into null. And let's set the use gravity back into true. And yep, that's really it. Now when this one is null, it will no longer move the object. So all we need to do is call this function. So let's do it on the player. So we want to use the exact same input key. So we want this to be able to toggle. So either pick up or drop the object. So that means we need to keep track if we're currently holding some object. So let's just store a private object grabable for the current object grabable. And we can make sure that we set it directly over here in the try get component. So you can do it like this. So if the try get component succeeds and automatically sets this, and then we just have to test our logic. So if this one, it is null, then that means we want to try to grab it. So not carrying an object, try to grab. But if this one is not null, then that means we're currently carrying something. If so, then we want to drop. So again, just go into the object grabable and just call the drop function. So there you go, just like this. And finally, after dropping, we just need to clear the field. Okay, so let's test. All right, so here we are, let's pick up the muffin. Yep, there it is. Now press the E key and yep, there you go, it does drop. All right, awesome. So I can pick it up and I can drop it and I can place it anywhere. All right, great, so that does work. Now for the other issue that I mentioned it. So if I pick it up and now I pretty much move forward fast enough to actually push the object. If I do that, look at that, you can see the object is constantly trembling. Now what is actually happening is that the object has some force. So if I select the object and I look over here in the rigid body and I expand upon the info, right now you can see the object does have some velocity, does have some speed. That is why this is constantly doing this. Basically the script is constantly trying to move the object and at the same time the object is constantly trying to move itself away. So right now if I just push it like this and I press the inky, yep there you go, you can see the object gets flown right to where it was. Now there are two ways to solve this. One way would be through code, so we could just use something like lerp to constantly bring the velocity down to zero. Or two, you can just increase the drag. So over here on the rigid body, we've got the mass, and we have the drag and the angular drag. And by default, drag is zero, so it has no drag, but if we increase it to something like five, if so, then now it will automatically apply some drag, which will lower the velocity. So here it is, the object is straight in front of me, and if I push it away, you can see, yep, there you go, it goes back and resets. So I can go anywhere and yep, it does work. Now, one more final optional thing on this system. On the rigid body, you also have a is kinematic toggle. Kinematic means that the object still exists in the physics world, but physics are not applied to it. So if I enable this as kinematic, with this, the object is still moving around. And if I push it, I can push the other muffins with it. So that works. However, when it's kinematic, other physics forces will not apply to this object. So for example, over here, there's a collider on this fridge. And if this object is kinematic, you can see, yep, it can go straight through the walls. 
So this is just another optional setting that you can play around with. You can set it pretty much the opposite of when setting the gravity. So you enable when picking up and disable when dropping. Okay, so with this now all we need is to attach this script to any objects that I want to pick up. So let's say all of these other muffins, so I'm just going to go inside the prefab. And over here I just need to attach the component, that's it. Then for this other muffin, let's also open it, go inside, attach the script, okay. This one as well, the same thing, go inside and attach the script. And also over here there are some sandwiches, let's also pick these up. So just go and all I have to do is just attach the script. So here I am, I can now pick up this muffin and I drop it in my shopping cart. And yep, it does work, pick up this one, drop it in there, pick up this one, drop it in there. Also pick up this muffin, let's go into this bucket and drop it in, there you go. Let's pick up this really nice sandwich and just drop it in there, pretty big. So here it is, there's a nice bucket with my muffin inside and over here my nice shopping cart full of food. Alright, awesome! So here we have a very simple pick up and drop system. You can apply this to anything, just attach the component and that's it. Alternatively, you could also refactor this script to make it an interface instead, and then you could implement it on all kinds of objects. That could be useful if you want a different whole behavior. I covered an interface in detail in another video if you want to learn more about them. And here is the exact same system working in third person. It works exactly the same way, just as a raycast from the camera position, finds the object and picks it up. For this one, since it's in third person, I made the grab point based on the camera instead of based on the camera rotation. You can download the project files which includes both demos. Now with this basic system done, I'm planning to make a really awesome crafting system tutorial just like the game Hydroneer. It's a really unique system, all based upon picking up and dropping objects. So stay tuned for that, or if you're from the future, check the link in the description. Alright, hope that's useful, check out these videos to learn some more. Thanks to these awesome Patreon supporters for making these videos possible. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.